Good afternoon, I'm Vanessa Tyler in for Mike Stevens. We'll get to our top story in just a moment, but first, let's get a check on weather with our meteorologist, John Heyman. Hey, John. Now, our top story. Starting in September, students won't be the only ones getting grades. As Files 1's Dan Manorino explains, the State Education Department is selecting a handful of public schools to be part of new teacher evaluations. A state trooper faces drunk driving charges just 48 hours after tougher rules for troopers suspected of just that went into effect. Sergeant Joseph Lettieri is accused of drunk driving and leaving the scene of a crash back on May 11th along the Garden State Parkway in Mountainside. Files 1's Christy Duffy has more. College spending. Our partners at the Record newspaper ran a story this week outlining what some see as large spending habits of Bergen Community College President Dr. Jerry Ryan. He spent $100,000 in expenses over three years. The Record's Alfred Doblin joins us with more. Alfred, were you shocked by this? Welcome back. The man who had hoped to be the next president of France spent his last night this week behind bars. A judge decided yesterday Dominique Strauss-Kahn can leave jail posting bail. He's accused of sexually attacking a New York hotel worker. Files 1 Stone Grissom has more. A former pharmacy technician at the Target store in Fairfield faces charges of stealing more than $12,000 worth of prescription drugs. Among those taken were thousands of hydrocone tablets and an undisclosed amount of testosterone and Xanax. 26-year-old Nicholas Dalton is in jail on charges of multiple drug offenses. Schools are most out for the summer and that means teens across the area will be looking for summer jobs. But is it too late? Files 1's Dan Manorino says not necessarily. The sexting case of Congressman Anthony Weiner has escalated with the discovery of more risque and lewd photos. Weiner avoids an uncomfortable return to Congress by taking what he calls a short leave of absence to get psychological treatment. It's a leave of absence his Democratic colleagues hope will be permanent. Files 1's Stone Grissom has more. The Tonys broadcasted from their new home at the Beacon Theater last night, and a who's who from movies, TV, and the Great White Way graced the red carpet for the big show. Our entertainment reporter Christina Baer was there to catch all the action. Oradell police are warning parents to be on the lookout for a possible child predator who they say attempted to lure two children on two separate occasions last week. The first attempt happened Monday on Hasbrook Boulevard. Police say the suspect approached a six-year-old girl and began talking to her, but he took off after the child's father confronted him. The second incident happened on Wednesday. A former high school track coach will spend the next six years in prison for a sexual relationship he had with an underage student. 30-year-old Joseph Stevenson of Franklin Township coached and taught at Delcy Regional High School. He pleaded guilty in October to sexual assault. He admitted to having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old student over the course of several months in 2009 and 2010. It's time now for your forecast on the fives. Our meteorologist John Heyman is keeping an eye on things in our Files Weather Center. Hey, John. Bills, bills, bills. No one wants to see them go up. But what do you do when you have to choose between staying warm in your own home and paying the price? Files 1's Kimberly Wallace has more. And now to our top story tonight. First came the high water, and now comes more bad news for flood victims who were hoping for some relief. Files 1 News reporter Kimberly Wallace tells us why a federal agency has denied a request for help from Governor Chris Christie. Email. It's time now for your forecast on the fives. Our meteorologist John Heyman is keeping an eye on things in our Fios Weather Center. Hey, John. Welcome back. After working in information technology for more than 20 years, an Oceanside, Long Island man decided to leave the IT world and start his own company, Painting Houses. Files 1's Jessica Fragoso has more this week's Long Island Business News Report. A volunteer band instructor who engaged in sexual misconduct with several students at a Bergen County High School has been sentenced to three years in prison 
for sex offenders. 29-year-old Derek Jarinski of Suffren pled guilty to child endangerment charges involving eight female students at Ramsey High School. He admitted touching some of the girls inappropriately and engaging others in sexual conversations. Jarinski will register as a sex offender and will not be allowed to hold a job where he works with children. Opening statements are underway in the corruption trial of the former Secaucus mayor swept up in that massive 2009 federal sting. Dennis Elwell is charged with accepting $10,000 through a middleman from an undercover government witness. Turning now to that giant eyesore we call Xanadu, even with the new developer and the new design, questions remain over hundreds of millions of dollars of tax breaks. Files One's Dan Manorino explains. Welcome back. 2011 is proving to be a terrifying, blazing year. We're not even halfway through, and the acres burned from forest fires is equal to all of 2010. Extreme fire risk conditions are posted in seven states, from Utah to Texas, Colorado to Oklahoma. Fios One's Stone Grissom has more. Finally this half hour, some very famous pieces in American cinema have hit the auction block. Actress Debbie Reynolds made millions over the weekend, auctioning her collection of Hollywood memorabilia. Marilyn Monroe's white dress from the seven-year itch sold for $4.6 million. Other items included Judy Garland's blue dress and the fabled ruby red slippers from The Wizard of Oz, which together went for $1.7 million. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Vanessa Tyler. We are your local source for news, weather, and sports. Keep it right here on Files 1. We are only on Verizon.